fuck were you expecting, huh? <laughs> You know, everything I said about this whole voter fraud thing that was going on in November of 2020, guess what? I was fucking right! You disingenuous, dense motherfucker. But I guess nobody cares about the mainstream truth that is being revealed before us all. And I guess the media doesn't care about journalism anymore because journalism is dead. So fuck you, mainstream media. And that's all coming up today on Spot the Liberal. Enjoy the ride! Moscow, Moscow, grand masses on the wall, watch the ceiling tables fall, yo ho 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 ho! Moscow, 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 Irish rivers roll me, show me a little, yo ho 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 ho! No, I am not on crack. Yes, this is generally how I am on a daily basis. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on the air yet again! Good! Early morning to you all. Guest lines, out of control inflation, substandard cybersecurity, open borders. If I were a Republican, I'd be called inconvenient. But I'm Democrat, so I just another one term president that's working to his full potential. Yeah, of course you are, Joe. You're not smarter than a fifth grader, Joe. You're stupid. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this episode of Spot the Liberal. I'm Kevin the Skull Anderson. With me, as always, are the voices in my head, wherever they may be in my head. I do not know where in this case, because they probably have gone out to lunch somewhere in my hippocampus. Okay. Joe Biden is the most illegitimate president in history. Why do I say he's the most illegitimate president in history of any nation ever? Well, the people sure as hell didn't elect him. We didn't elect him. I sure as hell didn't elect him. I voted for Donald Trump. You know why? Because Donald Trump was the only candidate for this job and would still be president if it weren't for the deep state constantly undermining him here's the thing unemployment right $365 plus $300 is 665 in unemployment a week $15 an hour times 40 hours is $600 a week You get more money sitting on your ass at home and letting the government pay you to shut up than you are actually working and speaking your mind. That's why all these people are turning down jobs by the buttload. I've seen it on the news, I know. I've been watching the news lately. Have you been watching the news lately? Because if you have, chances are... You probably missed this little nugget because it must have whizzed by your head like a bumblebee or a stray bullet. Let me tell you something, people, okay? You get... Only in America do you get less money working than you do sitting on your ass at home doing nothing. All these other countries work themselves to death just to make ends meet. And yet... Modern education creates people just smart enough to follow orders and repeat whatever the hell it is they're told to do, and just dumb enough to think this makes them smarter than everyone else, even though you know, and I know, and everyone else knows, that it really just makes them dumb. It's that simple, people. Modern education in America is a complete 
joke. It's a laughing stock. It's an urban legend. It's a myth. It's not legitimate. That's part of the reason why I'm not going back to school, because of the fact that it's yet another extension of the crime syndicate that is the Democratic Party. Oh, and by the way, you want to know why I'm not going back to school? It costs too much money! And now the government wants to make school tuition free for all illegal immigrants. Yeah, let them do that. But at the end of the day, we're just going to be the ones footing the bill, right? Oh, hell no. If you think I'm going to take that line down, you're wrong. I'd rather hang myself. Okay, just kidding. I wouldn't do that. The point I'm trying to make is the information that they censor, meaning the Illuminati, meaning NASA, meaning the Fourth Reich or the Democratic Party, because the Third Reich was Nazi Germany, obviously, and Adolf Hitler. So, Godwin's Law right there. In case you haven't had a little bit of that lately, there you go. But the information that the government censors, the information that the educational system censors, the educational information that the mainstream media, that CNN, MSNBC, ABC, NPR, NBC, CBS, PBS, the information that all these people censor is precisely and exactly the information that you need to know in order to become more aware of your surroundings and the rest of the world. Not what you want to know, but what you need to know. It is important. It is so, so important that you know this information. Because if you don't know this information, and yes, I'm a little bit tired, I just yawned. But if you don't know this information, you're just going to end up like John Lydon of the Sex Pistols. But even John Lydon of the Sex Pistols knows that the right wing would become the cool ones giving the middle finger to the establishment and the left wing would become the sniveling self-righteous twatty ones going around shaming everyone. And that's just quoting what he said. Not exactly verbatim word to word, but you know. So listen up, people. Listen to me good. When people who don't know what they're doing are elected to Congress, when people who are so incoherently brainwashed and stupid get into Congress. The government gets too big for its britches and every single one of us end up paying the price. Why do you think gas is empty in all these gas stations around the nation? Why do you think it was so easy for a bunch of hackers to get into the colonial pipeline? Here's the deal. All right. My faith in God is just about gone. The only thing that's keeping it alive is the fact that there is actually a God looking down on me, telling me things to tell you people so that you people know what I know, so that you become smarter for knowing it. I'm a Baptist Christian who was born into a dysfunctional family of Baptist Christians, okay? My family and I are believers of God and have been our whole lives. But here lately, times have changed, and several of my family members have strayed too far from God because of all the shit that's happened in the last few years. And as you all know, you know what has happened in the last few years. 
meaning Obama's still calling the shots, even though he's not president anymore. I mean, it, it doesn't look like it at first, but if you really think about it, all of Biden's cabinet members, if not most of them, are Barack Obama cabinet appointees from years before. Anyway, Jay Saster responded to my forum post on DeviantArt. Jay Saster says, Yahweh, or Christianity's Jehovah, is not the best person, entity, or presence, but he has created Jesus, who is an amazing person. It's not the religion that strays people away from God. It's the Christian people that make people stray away from Christianity. The high worst belief of most monotheistic religions is astonishingly toxic and unironically make people stay away from such religion. Jay Sester questions if that person is Catholic anymore, but Jay Sester mostly follows the ideology of be good, support things that make the most people live a better life. According to Jay Sester, the Christian religion and some Abrahamic religions isn't all that bad, but the toxic people makes it bad, and unfortunately the minority of toxic people are the loudest. And it doesn't help that megachurches or hyper-materialistic defeats the purpose and point of being humble like Jesus Christ, who, as Jay Sester says, was an amazing person. I responded to this by saying that that's precisely the thing. I don't even go to church hardly anymore, but when I do, I usually stay silent and observe, even during the praise part of the service. A good friend of mine named Fred1009 says, But the toxic people makes it bad. This is the key to it. It's the loudest people that draw the attention. Fred said it before, the real issue is who gets to speak to God. Being a loud, well-known God shouter can lead to money and political power. Power corrupts. And it corrupts absolutely. Okay, I just added the last part. But Fred 10,000, 10, Fred 1009, it's got a point. And Jace Saster has a point. Meaning Jace Saster. If you get what I'm saying. Jace Saster. Jace Saster. Right? Try saying that three times fast. I guarantee you you can't. If you do, I'll give you... No, nah, I'm not going to give you any money. Because it's not supposed to be a challenge. Of course you can say it three times fast. Chakalaka Ding Dong says... From a Christian perspective, I could not agree more than people mis misrepresent Christianity. But in my opinion, I don't think the fact that few people follow the teachings of Jesus should cause people to stray from the faith. Rather, it actually serves to illuminate these teachings even more. See how important they are, that it puts a sour taste in your mouth when people don't follow them. That says a lot if you ask me. Even to the point about God not being the best character, consider both that he established those good rules that people refuse to follow, and that according to the Bible and Christian tradition, the amazing person Jesus is that same God in the flesh, who loved his heavenly estate and took on human flesh so he could bear the sufferings of his own creation and die for them. Shakalaka Ding Dong has a point. Shakalaka Ding Dong is speaking logically in this reply. But the thing is, for every so many people, for every so many people that respond to this, with logic, there's always going to be at least one. There's, there's got to be at least one. There has to be at least one. He 
He continues by saying, Sure, the Old Testament may have some questionable passages, and there may be some unanswered questions about life and the universe, but we're only human after all. We don't know everything that God does, and we don't know everything like God does. But look at what you do know. God loved his creation enough to die for him, and he has revealed more than enough evidence of that because he wants people to believe and receive the gift of life. That's my two cents anyways. That's what Shakalaka Ding Dong says. Now, Kosej responded to this by saying, I'd instead start with, hey, he created you even though he knew in advance that you'd be an asshole towards him. Lol. Now, Kosej has a point. Koshed says the point. He created us even though we would obviously turn against him at some point. He created us knowing that we would eventually turn away from him. And that it would be up to us to turn back to him when we have no place else to go. And I just yawned again. I'm obviously tired, but I'm going to get through this. If I can get through this, I can get through anything. Doom Raider says, If there's one thing I get tired of seeing, it's people treating God like some sort of not very bright child. It's one thing when people who refuse to believe in God do it. It's entirely another when believers do it. No, God does not need to speak in a specific way, otherwise it's a lie. No God does not require evolution to be false, otherwise he didn't create man. That's true. That's very true. Doom Raider has a point. A very good point. A bunch of good points. And you know what? I'm inclined to agree with a statement like that because it makes sense. A lot of sense. But you also have to keep in mind that there's a lot of things going on in this world that we simply have not any power to control. So we have to put it in God's hands, right? We have to put it in God's hands because at the end of the day, He made us and can destroy us any damn well time He wants. Alright, now that I'm done with my thread on DeviantArt, let's get back to the episode. The mainstream media in America is the laughingstock of the journalism world. They tie the truth up in a freaking trunk, shut the trunk, and then proceed to burn the car of which contains the truth that's been locked up in a trunk of it. Because of that, the mainstream media are so hopelessly fucking brainwashed that they could care less what happens or how it happens. And that is probably the biggest shame of all. You know, the mainstream media wasn't always this corrupt, this brainwashed, this hopeless. The mainstream media 50 years ago looked down on homosexuals. Now they praise them. So which is it? Do you hate homosexuals or do you love them? I mean, make up your fucking mind. Pick a door and be done with it, you know? Now, me personally, as far as homosexuals are concerned, I don't hate them. I don't even dislike them. I don't hold anything against them. I hold no ill will against anyone who's homosexual. My cousin Stedman is homosexual. But this den of thieves clearly does not give a damn about people like that. They support the people that poison your water, your food, limit your rights, they work against your security and your president, And now they want you disarmed. We've been through this before, ladies and gentlemen. We know how this ends. It's basically Nazi Germany all over again, except it's happening 85 years later, 
and we're caught dead in the middle of it. And by dead, I really mean dead as in dead dead. Because we're fucked. For at least the next couple of years. Unless there is a super majority in both House and Senate next year. This country is going to go the way of the dinosaur. Except this country is not the dinosaur. This country is the asteroid that killed the dinosaur. And that's the problem, ladies and gentlemen. That's the problem. And so you see, so you see it now, that Congress does not give a damn about any of you. They hate you. Especially the Democrats and most Republicans. These people hate whites, They hate Jews, they hate Christians, they hate conservatives, they hate Republicans, they hate naturalized legal immigrant citizens, they hate patriots, and they hate all of you. They hate the hell out of me too. And I'm not talking about the movement either, I'm talking about myself. They hate me And they want to chastise and stigmatize me because I'm autistic and I'm not like everybody else. These same people that we were stupid enough to elect last year believe in climate change, reparations, abortion after birth, open borders, banning guns, Repealing the Second Amendment and the Bill of Rights, Socialism, Communism, Marxism, Fascism, and Sharia Law. They believe in government taking over every aspect of human rights and the elimination of private property and personal rights. These are the same people that want to kill us off like Stalin did when he killed millions of his own Russian comrades as a dictator from the 30s to the 50s. Now, let me give you a little bit of a story. The founder of Wendy's, Dave Thomas, he was a high school dropout and feared that his success might inspire teens to quit school So he went back to school at the age of 60 to get a GED, founding the Dave Thomas Educational Center, which offers GED's tuition to young adults. My sister once dropped out of high school. She got her GED. She now babysits. 12 hours a day, 6-7 days a week. If you drop out of school, just make sure you have a plan to go back in advance to get your diploma or your GED. Don't just drop out of high school and never go back. It's important that you have at least a high school diploma. If you don't have a high school diploma, how are you going to get a job at McDonald's flipping burgers? You're not. It's just not going to happen. The point is, don't blame Trump! Because you are stuck with these two shitheads. From all your deplorables in Calvert County. Take a look at this sign. This sign is telling. This sign is truthful. This sign is conservative. And this sign is constitutional. But unfortunately, we live in a time where everybody gets offended by everything that they see and everything that they hear. The first reaction from anyone that hears anything nowadays is to be offended by things. Fifty fucking years ago, you didn't have this problem. I'm just saying. 
The point I'm trying to make is, and I'm just saying this lightly, we are stuck with these two shitheads for at least the next three years. The only thing we can do to prevent them from having anything to do with power is next year in the midterms, 2022, we vote straight Republican at least four or five times. Because the Democrats got to vote four or five times. We only got to vote once. And our votes didn't even count. So what does that tell you? We got to fight fire with fire. Alex Peter at Law Overruled on Facebook wrote the following post. Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. was 48 years old when he destroyed Anita Hill, 51 when he wrote the crime bill, 53 when he supported DOMA, 60 years of age when he supported the Iraq war. And that's only the first 30 years of his political career. Not to mention what happened after that. And we're going to get to that in a moment. But before I get to that, I want to remind you all that we're living in godless times. Now here's the thing. You know how you survive in godless times? You keep an open mind and you speak to your heart's content. And he was also he was also 61 when he eulogized Storm Thurmond. Basically what Alex is saying is the man has been a shithead for his entire career, which complements the sign that I showed you just before. So, let's get that right. And not only should we get that right, you know what else we should get right? Our affairs in order. It's not hard, people. It is just not that hard. I mean, fuck, man. If people are that stupid to elect someone who has dementia is a known racist and a known pedophile who suffers from dementia who was clearly never going to be capable mentally of fulfilling his duties as president much less for two terms or even one then you've got to consider USA is on the market now. It's going to be sold to China soon. Or North Korea. Or Iran, depending on who gets a nuclear weapon first from the Biden administration. Because I guarantee it's going to happen. One of these days, Joe Biden is going to do something so incredibly stupid that we're just going to have to have him as ass impeached. Not that that's going to happen, because they tried to impeach Trump twice. That never worked out. All All they happened to do was waste taxpayer money, which is all the Democrats are good at, is wasting everyone's money and their time. They've, They've done that. That's the only good thing they've done in 230 years as a political party. That's the only good thing they've done, is waste everyone's time and money and be truthful with them and tell them, Hey! We're a bunch of stupid shitheads who started the Ku Klux Klan. We don't know any better. We don't want you to know any better either. We want you to be stupid like us. The three stooges were right. Moronica for morons. You know what I'm saying? Look up you Nazi spy on YouTube. It's a three stooges short from the early 1940s during the heyday of... World War II. Anyway, Joe Biden is mediocre for all. 
He's a useless tool and a worthless piece of shit. He should have never been elected by anyone. He should have never gotten into politics. He's just the reason, he's one of the main reasons why this country is dead now, because we elect people like that, who have no business in the White House, or in the Lincoln Memorial, or in the Washington Monument, or in the House of Representatives, or in the Senate. And it's because of those damn lobbyists that keep bribing these officials. They bribe these officials every single time, and they just keep taking it, taking it, taking it. Sure, we'll take the money. What, are you fucking serious? Bullshit. You get term limits installed and added to our Constitution, then this virus will go away. The real, I mean, you're talking about the coronavirus, right? That's all the media talks about. Coronavirus this, coronavirus that. You want to get rid of the real virus that's plaguing our country? You install term limits to our Constitution... So that no politician can serve more than two terms. If that happens, 98% of all American elected politicians in Congress will not, keyword not, and I'm not talking about K-N-O-T, I'm talking about N-O-T, not eligible for re-election in the next midterm or major election. It's that simple. Alright? That being said, I want to thank you guys very much once again for tuning into this episode of Spot the Liberal. And to all you people in the mainstream media, fuck off. You people are the fucking bane of every American's existence, and you should be ashamed of yourselves. Bottom line, I'm going to get the hell out of here. I'm going to let you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for spending 33 minutes of your time with me. I'm out of here. See ya. Bye-bye.